Amazon's Kuiper satellites finally took to the skies today after a long delay. We were expecting this launch in 2024. I made a video about nine months ago, which I will link above, where I talked about how they were saying they were gonna launch at the end of last year, but it'll probably slip to this year. I didn't expect it to slip all the way to the end of April. But finally, 27 Kuiper satellites have been launched to low Earth orbit to begin officially the constellation for Amazon. This video I took with my family outside in our backyard. I love being able to do that. Now these are the very first of the operational satellites. There were two prototype satellites that launched in 2023. So there has been a long wait to finally get these satellites off the ground. What is going on with these delays, both the launch delays and the production delays? And is Amazon Kuiper going to actually be able to compete against SpaceX, Starlink, and other players such as OneWeb? This is a headline that came across my feed today. Amazon founder, Blue Origin CEO, Jeff Bezos, taking on SpaceX, Tesla CEO, Elon Musk, and Starlink at the launch of its Project Kuiper satellites. Well, not exactly. It's going to be a long, long time before Kuiper is at any way competitive with Starlink or even operational. Kuiper, which was previously known as Project Kuiper, has been in the works since 20 2019. So this is six years that Amazon has been working on this. It does take a while to ramp up. It's taking a lot longer than I think a lot of people anticipated, especially Amazon, when they applied to an FCC license and said they were going to launch over 3,000 satellites, specifically 3,236 satellites. And they filed for the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, saying they were going to have all 3,000 some satellites launched by June 2029. Now, if it was SpaceX and they did have that really rapid cadence, then that's one thing. But this has been slow coming. In order to make this happen, Amazon purchased approximately 95 launches from various providers. United Launch Alliance, ULA, Arion Group, which Arion Space, Blue Origin, and SpaceX. Now, SpaceX was an add-on after some controversy, and those SpaceX launches, you'd think that they would get going immediately, because SpaceX can probably launch them pretty well immediately from the start of that contract, but they're not scheduled to start until mid-2025. That's not too far off, actually. So I think, actually, Amazon did itself a disservice by automatically not including SpaceX in that initial bulk purchase of 92 launches. If Amazon had actually gone ahead and purchased from what is Blue Origin's main competitor, SpaceX, then they would probably already have a significant number of Kuiper satellites launched in space right now. Not a huge number, and I'm gonna talk about why not a big number, but you know, at least a couple dozen maybe already launched and operational, but that's not the reality we are in. The reality is that they are relying on United Launch Alliance, which is a great provider, but very, very slow. Surprisingly slow, because their initial launches are on Atlas V, and they're gonna launch on Vulcan later. Vulcan has been slow to ramp up, but Atlas V already existed. It already exists, they're just waiting. So I do not understand, I personally don't understand. Someone tell me in the comments why it has taken this long to get these Project Kuiper satellites on board an Atlas V rocket to launch. Now we did have initially a weather delay a couple of weeks ago and then a range conflict delay. And I'm gonna do a separate video on that because I'm talking to some of my colleagues who are experts about what is going on with the range here at Cape Canaveral, different video. But that's only like a two week delay right there. What was the difference between the end of 2024, you know, they were aiming for like fourth quarter 2024 to now finally here we are in the second quarter of 2025. Like why that delay with an Atlas V? There were 27 Kuiper satellites on this Atlas V. Toy Bruno, the CEO of ULA was saying in a press briefing that ULA's Vulcan, their larger rocket, can hold 45 Kuiper satellites. So I don't know how many the other vehicles can, I don't know how many Ariane 6 can hold. I don't know how many New Glenn can hold. I don't know how many Falcon 9 can hold, but we're still talking, let's say, let's, let's just take an average of those two, Atlas V and Vulcan. That's approximately 36 on average satellites per launch. Now that's a really rough number. So that's just to do some simple math here. The FCC requires that half of the constellation be launched by June 2027. So that's 1,618 Kuiper satellites launched by June 2027. Two years, approximately. 
If we take that super rough number that I just said, that's probably not accurate. If we take that number, then that would mean there's approximately 45 launches that need to happen in the next two years for Kuiper to meet that deadline of launching half of its constellation to low Earth orbit by June 2027. And then the rest of it needs to happen by June 2029. Since this has been so, so delayed, what is the actual likelihood that Amazon is actually going to get 45 launches in the next two years? It's pretty much zero. We have a diversity of launch providers, but only one of them operates with high cadence. I suppose there's nothing to say that Amazon can't go back to SpaceX and purchase more launches, especially when they know that they are running into delays with these other launch providers, but I don't know if that's going to happen. And it's not really a high priority for them to actually meet that deadline. There was speculation earlier this year that the FCC in this particular administration, this presidential administration, would not agree to an extension for Amazon because of politics, essentially, because of corruption in politics. And I, I don't actually believe that's the case. I believe that there will be an extension, no problem, and that um, politics is not going to come into play to that. Something I did not know when I made my video nine months ago is that Amazon wants to launch 578 satellites before it starts internet service. That's a huge number. I actually thought they'd start with like, you know, start small with this first launch maybe, or maybe two launches and have enough to start small. But I was wrong and they want 578 satellites in low earth orbit before they start providing internet to their customers. When can they start providing internet to their customers? It's not gonna be 2025. And there is no reality in which that many launches are gonna get that many Kuiper satellites into low earth orbit in 2025. They'll be lucky if they can do it by the end of 2026 simply because of the very low cadence of most of the launch providers that they've contracted with. However, there was a quote given by a Amazon spokesperson, James Watkins. He told Bloomberg that they expect actually to have internet service operational, enough satellites on low earth orbit to have internet service by the end of this year, 2025. There seems to be a disconnect here because there is no reality that they can launch 578 satellites by the end of this year. And yet this other guy is saying that they expect to have internet service operational by the end of this year which tells me that maybe there's a lower number or that person's delusional. I would go as far as say that they're not gonna be, if they really truly have that number in mind of 578 satellites, and I don't know where that number comes from, but if that is their true minimum to get internet service started, then I'm actually going to say 2027 will be the start of internet service for Amazon. And come two years from now, I might be looking back at this video and thinking, oh wow, I was optimistic. It's actually gonna be this date. That's the way it goes in the space industry. Things are always delayed, always, always, always delayed. Whenever someone tells you a date, add time to it because it is going to be wrong. <laughs> and that of course assumes that all of these launches happen perfectly. I'm not saying that they're riding on anything risky here, but there are accidents. There are things that happen. And it also assumes that all of the satellites are going to be operational. There was a solar storm. Now we are exiting solar maximum but there's still a chance that a solar storm could deorbit some satellites early. Um, that happened with some Starlink satellites a year or two ago. Um, there's always chances that something could go wrong with a whole batch of satellites or individual satellites that add up over time. Or God forbid, some kind of cyber attack or um, ASAT, you know, anti-satellite uh, purposeful something happening. I mean, I don't think that's realistic. I don't think that's gonna happen, but you just never know. And here's the other sticking point. It's one thing to say that there are launch delays and there's always launch delays, pretty much always. But then there's also production delays. So Amazon is traditionally not a satellite manufacturer. They don't have this down. And traditionally in the space industry, satellites are not mass manufactured. They are custom built. They're, they're very expensive and they're very you know, pristine and accurate. And that's still true for a lot of national security payloads. And uh, part of Project Kuiper, part of the Kuiper solutions is actually going to be for national security. It's a whole other subsidiary. I don't know, it's a whole other company part of Amazon. Um, but in general, when we're talking about mass producing satellites, it's not as expensive and it is not as you know pristine and, and perfect. And it, it's more of a quicker process. But Amazon has never done this. And traditionally the space industry has not done this except with Starlink and therefore, um, they're running into production problems. A Bloomberg article, and by the way, all the articles will be in the description below. Bloomberg reported that after more than a year, Amazon's only produced a few dozen Kuiper satellites. So they might actually be their own bottleneck here. It might not be those who they've contracted with to launch. It might be how many they can actually make to then fit inside the rockets that they are scheduled to launch with. According to Bloomberg, Amazon would actually need to 
quadruple its current rate of production in order to meet those FCC deadlines, which I'm going to go back to that and say that it's not that important to meet that deadline because the FCC will extend it. What's going to be a question is who is going to be the customer and is the customer okay? They already have some customers, which I talked about in my last video. I don't foresee any of those customers that Amazon has contract with um, dropping them just because they're slightly longer, like by a year or two longer in the start of their service. Now, what I do see is customer dissatisfaction or hesitancy with Starlink. Starlink is by far super ridiculously successful. So don't get me wrong. They have customers all over the world. They've got, you know, a diversity of types of customers and they have 8,000 some Starlink satellites in orbit. In fact, last night I was up with my son, my one-year-old who would not go to sleep. And so I was holding him watching Falcon 9 go up with another batch of Starlink satellites. I later learned it was the 250th dedicated Starlink launch. So over 250 launches of Starlink they've launched 8,400 or something slightly less than that Starlinks. SpaceX obviously has the major head start. However, current geopolitics, current domestic politics even, is showing that people are hesitant to stick with Starlink because of the policies and um, opinions of Elon Musk. Um, places like Ukraine, for example, are hesitant because they are not sure if they need to, if they can rely on Starlink to be uh, reliable in times of of great need with their war um, with with Russia's war with Ukraine, and then also others, especially Europeans um, that are Western allies, are also questioning whether or not they can rely on Starlink. There's a backlash happening against anything Elon Musk, and therefore there's a backlash against SpaceX and Tesla and some other projects that Elon Musk is part of. Now, I don't think this is going to be long term. I don't think anybody who's involved in security wants to rely on one provider that they, um, in the back of their mind, they're questioning. So what we're probably going to see is that some Starlink customers will probably also go with another internet service provider, um, OneWeb or Kuiper or some other. And there's really not that many choices when we're talking about lower orbit internet. There is no reality in which Kuiper is going to directly compete with Starlink. What they're going to do is find their own niche, find a reason for existing, even if that's just being a backup, but they're probably going to be primary for a lot of places that for whatever reason are not going to go with Starlink. Bottom line, Kuiper is way over delayed, but I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference simply because there is such demand for this kind of service that I think Kuiper is going to find their way. It was great to see one launch of Kuiper. Let's let's get it moving. Let's get it moving. Toy Bruno said that it'll probably be 2026 before ULA launches all eight of those contracted Atlas V Kuiper missions. I don't know what their plans are in terms of alternating between Atlas V and, and Vulcan. I don't know what the plans are for New Glenn, which has been slow to ramp up, and Ariane 6, which has been slow to ramp up. Like, I just don't know what the timeline looks at, but let's do more of this. I want to see more launching from the Cape and around the world.